What's up guys? My name is Sterling Smith and today we will be discussing Michelangelo. Although we briefly discussed Michelangelo in class, we did not cover many of his works. Today I will be discussing some of the artwork we did not cover in lecture, so hopefully you all will learn something new. Before we talk about Michelangelo's artwork, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of background information about him. So Michelangelo de Lodovico Bonarotti Simone was born on March 6, 1745 in Caprice, Italy. His father worked for the Florence government, so they shortly moved back after, and that's where he was considered to grow up and be raised. His mother died when he was just six years old, so that is pretty tragic. So when he was 13 years old, he apprenticed the painter Domenico Girolando, and after a year of doing that, he received the attention of Lorenzo de Medici, and he invited him to reside in his home and he accepted the offer while he was living in his house. He learned a lot from all of these influential people that he is surrounded by, especially Bertolo de Giovanni, which was a famous sculpture and the keeper of Lorenzo's collection of ancient Roman sculptures. This is what I believe really like impacted Michelangelo and it helped him become known as more of a sculpture, which he considers himself over a painter. So now that we've talked about Michelangelo, let's go ahead and look at some of his artwork. The first piece we are going to talk about today is the Madonna of Bridges. This is Michelangelo's personal take on the Virgin and Child enthroned. We saw some Virgin and Child enthroned sculptures during class, but this one is very different. This one contains Jesus standing up, not sitting in Mary's lap, and it is almost as Jesus is coming out towards us. Mary is looking down and away in the sculpture. It is almost as if she is sad or if she knows that her son's fate will be dying on the cross. This piece was donated to the Church of Our Lady in 1514 and it was only taken down twice in its lifetime. One was for the French Revolutionary War and the other one was for World War II. The next piece we are going to discuss is Bacchus. This piece was created when Michelangelo went to Rome for five years. This sculpture was done between 1496 and 1497. Bacchus was the Roman god of wine and he was commissioned by the banker Jacopoco Galli for his garden. He wanted the statue modeled after the ancients. If you take a look in his right hand, you'll notice that he is drinking wine. This makes sense because he's the god of wine. He also does not look as physically fit as Michelangelo's other sculptures. This is probably because of the alcohol he was drinking. If you take a look at his left hand, you will notice Bacchus holding a lion skin. The lion skin was the symbol of death. He also holds grapes, which is the symbol of life. There is a fawn feeding from the grapes which can symbolize mankind and how we feed from life while death is always nearby. This statue was later transferred to Florence in 1572. <laughs> the last piece of art that I will be going over is the crucifixion of St. Peter. This piece was commissioned by Pope Paul III in 1541 and it was the last fresco Michelangelo would complete in his lifetime. Michelangelo focused on the pain and suffering of St. Peter. St. Peter is centered in the middle of the fresco which draws the viewer's attention. If you look at the people nearby, they are very distressed. After this fresco was restored in 2009, Many people believe Michelangelo actually painted himself in the fresco. He would be in the upper left corner wearing a red tunic and a blue turban. During the Renaissance time, blue turbans were worn by Renaissance sculptors to keep the dust out of their hair. If this is true, this would be Michelangelo's one and only self-portrait to exist. Michelangelo is known to be one of the greatest Renaissance artists of his time. He was known for such detail in portraying the human form. He died in 1564 from a small illness at the age of 88, which is really impressive because he lived long past the average lifespan. Michelangelo was a huge influence on the artist during the time and the future artists to come. Alright guys, well thank you for watching this video. I really hope you learned a lot about Michelangelo and enjoyed learning about it just as much as I did. Thank you guys.